All right, well in this next segment of how to use the crop budget and leasing tool, I'm gonna to talk about how you would actually compare a share lease versus a cash lease. If you haven't already seen the uh, video instructional lecture about how to, about the general overview of this uh, new tool, I would, I would encourage you to look at that one first before you look at this particular segment. All right, well, picking them up from my previous lecture, I kind of showed you how you would add different crops that you would compare and how you would actually go ahead about and make changes if you don't like one of the numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and make a change here like that. And now you can see how that would change the uh, entire cost numbers there for this particular budget. Well, if you, if you're, if you want to get rid of your overrides, there's an easy way to clear these instead of having to go through manually and typing in numbers, you notice here there's a clear button right here and you just click on this and that will that will take away all those overrides you did and it will go back and use the default value. So I probably should reemphasize here again, if you have an override number in here, it will automatically take precedence over the default value that you had here. So the whatever the override is has precedence over the base number, otherwise it will use the base number and all those numbers then will show up in the uh, specific cost calculations and the returns that we're seeing here at the bottom. Okay, let's now look at the, the case of how you would actually compare a cash lease versus a share lease. Let me kind of go back to my original situation that I had to start with and get rid of uh, one of these budgets and just look at wheat from North Central because I kind of experimented with that one here. So to, uh, to uh, basically to zero out or get rid of a particular budget, you have a couple of options. If you want to keep it around and use it maybe in later budget analysis, you notice here in this particular column right here, there's this use check mark. If you uh, uncheck that, if I can get it to work right, there it goes. It will, uh, by unchecking that, it automatically takes this away. So if you wanna go, come back to it real quick, you can, you can check that back again. These numbers will show back up. So that's one way you can get rid of things. The other way you can get rid of a budget that you don't want to uh, worry about or mess with anymore or use for analysis is come back over here to the drop down. Again, you get to the drop down by first clicking in the cell. And then, and then when you click in that cell, this little disclosure triangle will show up. So you click on the disclosure triangle. And if you go clear to the bottom, you should, you should see a uh, item that says no, just click on that and that will basically get rid of your budget as well here. So that's, that's the, really the two ways you can re-clear the budget thing out. Let me go back in and put wheat in for this first one. So again, I will click in this top box here. And notice how the red underline has followed me up as I click in that particular cell. Click in on the disclosure triangle and let's go again, go back to um, wheat for north central rotation, which is what I had originally in here. And you can see at this particular, for this particular budget, uh, we are looking at basically a return overall cost of about uh, $39.37 per acre. And you can see what the break-even uh, price and break-even yield is, okay? Well, how would you about go about looking at this if you're trying to compare a cash lease for a share lease and you just had one crop? The process would be the same if you had multiple crops because as you uh, add crop acres to this, these numbers here will adjust accordingly. The same for the share lease here. So again, whether you have one crop, multiple crops in the rotation you're looking at, they will correctly show out here in the cash lease and the share lease. And that's also, you can kind of control that by the number of acres you're growing here. So again, if you want to look at a certain mix where you maybe have more corn than soybeans, you can do that by putting more corn acres than soybean acres, and you can account for fallow acres and double crop acres here, and that will adjust the pertillable and the per planet numbers accordingly. All right, so uh, again, let's look at how this would, thing would work here. So you notice here, first of all, that the look, thing to look at is this thing on a cash lease. You gotta consider, does the landlord pay for lime and own the own irrigation equipment? Again, this is just for the cash lease only. Uh, and you check the, these appropriate boxes. So if the landlord's paying for uh, lime or on a cash lease, check that box. If the landlord owns the own irrigation, equipment on a cash lease, check that box. If you're talking about share lease, those things are taken care of over on this side right here. All right, so here's for the share lease now, that here's where you enter the percentages. So for those of you familiar with KSU lease, you know that if you wanted to share things, you had to type in a negative 100 
and basically you had to have something filled in for all these spots here. That's not the case in this particular tool. So if you want to share something and you're not sure what the share percentage should be, go ahead and you can either keep a key a negative 100 like you used to do with KSU lease. I find it easier though just to key in an asterisk in. So anything non-numeric will tell the tool that you want to share it based on whatever share percent you have over here okay so that this is something that can float based on what uh, an equitable amount is or if it's something you want to experiment with so if that's the case go ahead and again i normally use an asterisk to represent that this is something i want to potentially vary the percent of if you know for sure what the percent is like if you know for sure like that the landlord is going to pay on a share lease the landlord is going to pay for all your uh, lime, then you go ahead and put a zero in to represent the, the amount that the tenant is paying for it. So the, these percents are represent that the percent that the um, uh, tenant is covering. So if the landlord is paying all the lime, that means the tenant is basically covering zero percent, so you enter a zero there. Same with all these other numbers here. Now if you leave it blank, that is telling the program that the tenant is paying for 100 percent of all that particular expense items. Or you could go ahead and put a 100% in as well. But you know, typically with a share lease, the tenant's gonna be paying for probably the majority of the uh, items here. And if that's the case, it's, you know, it's easier just to have leave that blank rather than kind of gumming this up with a lot of a lot of numerical numbers here. So that, that's the reason why I, I allow that option of leaving this blank. So again, in this particular case now, uh, we're, we're, we're sharing the, we're gonna share the, the crop output, the yield, based on some number we key up over here, right here. And uh, we're not sure the percent we want to use yet. So that's why we let, let this thing kind of float with being the asterisk. And the same with the seeds and the fertilizer and the herbicides. Again, we'll adjust those over here with this percent thing. But we do know that the landlord is going to pay for all the, la uh, all the lime, which means the tenant pays for zero. So I keyed a zero in for that percent of it. And then the same thing over here with the machinery thing. So we have two different sizes of the, of the machinery. We have both the variable cost and the fixed cost for these operations. Again, we're assuming probably the tenant owns most of the equipment, so it's going to cover all those costs. Um, but again, irrigation may be a different story here. So if the landlord owns all the irrigation uh, equipment, which would be the fixed expense for irrigation. Again, you want to key a zero in to represent that the tenant doesn't cover any of the owned uh, irrigation equipment that the landlord owns. So that would be specified there. And again, uh, the potential cash rent that you're talking about, that would be uh, applied here. Again, this, this cash rent though, when you're looking at a cash rate, it applies the same cash rental rate across all the crops because we're assuming that you're looking at similar property in this analysis. All right, so that's that's the basic inputs for how you would use this. Again, these percentages apply to all the crops that you're looking at within this crop mix that we, again, we assume similar acreage and you're looking at a crop rotation here. So uh, again, most leases don't really vary by the type of, of crop that you're growing here. So we, we do that by basically applying this once. It makes the program much simpler by, by having only one place to enter the percentages that apply across to all crops. Then we can see that the program calculates both cash uh, lease numbers. Again, with on the cash lease side, um, you know the the landlord is going to get the cash lease amount here for income for for him, while as the tenant's going to have to, have to pay that as an expense. And then you can see the net returns per acre just for a cash lease here, and then what uh, both the tenant and the landlord earn from something like this. So with the uh, old KSU lease, for those of you familiar with that, uh, you know there probably should be a land charge to account for property taxes and such, but to me it didn't make any sense to use the cash rental rate as an expense to the landlord because then the landlord would never ever show any kind of property. At best, the best they would do is break even here. So I kind of took that out when looking at the return to the landlord. You need to go back in though, if you're actually going to figure out the true return, figure out what the property tax rate is, to get the actual return of acreage to the landlord like this. Okay, and then looking at the share lease now, you'll notice the program already ca has calculated a share lease, an equitable amount. Again, this, this calculation should be exactly the same as what KSU lease has done. 
And uh, it does that by looking at these things that we are sharing versus the revenue side. And what it's really doing is it's trying to get an exact match down here. So return to total cost. Now, um, because I'm rounding this up to the nearest percent, these aren't going to be quite exact. They're not going to be exactly the same number, but again, you know, getting such fine detail to go to the job to the tens place or hundreds place to me didn't make a whole lot of sense here. So it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, this is this is a pretty close to being an equitable lease. Now to get that to actually show up though, you actually need to key that in this box here and this allows for overrides. If you don't like the 68%, you can key in maybe like 80% or something and it will show you what the returns are. But as you go away from this suggested equitable amount, you'll notice here that the return rate here changes. So uh, normally we'll want to put that in at 68% and this matches up very nicely if you're doing a two thirds, one third uh, type share arrangement. Because now we're at a very similar percentages. Notice there though, even though we have the same percentages, that doesn't mean the return is the same. But that would be an equitable share arrangement. So now you can do the kind of comparison of saying, okay, well, how does my cash lease look? I can see what my returns are both to my tenant and landlord here. I can see what my returns are to my tenant um, uh, for this particular acre. Assuming that I get this particular yield and um, price that I first plugged into my budget, you know, the 50 bushel yield, 550 price, then this is what the returns are. Later on, when I show you how the Monte Carlo simulation part of it work, I'll show you what happens if, okay, what happens if these prices and yields don't come out to be exactly what I think here? What happens if it's going to be something different? Well, through that Monte Carlo process, we can actually see how that affects our share arrangement. But just for a one-off type thing, looking at one particular set of prices and yields, you can see what the returns are both to the landlord and both to the tenant. All right, well, that'll be the end of this particular video instruction segment.